every man and woman that goes to war anywhere would learn to claim those promises and put God first, I can guarantee you on the word of the living God, they can come back without a scratch. Praise the Lord Jesus. This is Thurman Scribner with the Living Savior Ministries. We praise the King for everything he does. Today we've got a great show for you. We're doing shows of people that actually have received healings and miracles from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We want people to know that when I tell stories about the wonderful things God has done for people on our healing uh, shows that we talk about, how to walk in divine health, we want you to see some of these people and see and hear them tell of their own miracle themselves and how this relationship that they have had with God has totally changed once he touches their body and does something miraculous for them. <clears throat> I have a gentleman with me today by the name of Johnny Brumfield. Now, many of you have heard me talk about Johnny. Johnny is from Manny, Louisiana, and he received a tremendous Miracle healing from God. And I will have to say this changed Johnny's life forever. I want to introduce you to this fine gentleman, Mr. Johnny Brumfield. Here he is. I want you to say hello, Johnny, to the folks. Well, how are everybody doing? Thank God. <clears throat> just need to be here at this moment. J Johnny, I have a question to ask you. To start off with, uh, how long have you been going to church? When did you start going to I church? I started in John Church when I was 11 years old on the Morning Star Baptist Church. Like, see, I was born and baptized in a creek. Okay. And uh, as I grew up in the church, you know, I went back out in the world straight away. But thanks now, be to God. No, wait a minute. Why in the world would anybody that really got in the church get back in the world? But I was young at the time. I think I was around... 14, 15 years old. And we don't know who Christ is, do we? That's right. And yeah. we don't really know who Christ is. I know of Jesus yeah. Christ, but I didn't really know him yeah. as my personal Savior as I do now. Because once you become in Christ, you're always in Christ. Because God has really have brought me and changed my life around. So anyway, as you go through all these years, uh, baptized in the creek, you know, mm -hmm. like lots of people, thinking you really know Jesus. But yet you go back out there and get in the world. You, you really didn't know That's Jesus. That's right. I really you, didn't know Jesus. You heard Jesus. about him. And you even went down and got baptized. That's right. But you really didn't know the I king. I didn't really know who God was. So tell us just a little bit about your life as you come along over the next few years. Yeah. Well, you, did you go to church a lot? Or, or? Yes. I went, I joined, went, uh, went back to church. And where I live, I used to walk with back in the day with what I call seed ticks and everything. I would walk across the woods every Sunday go to Sunday school, go to uh, church. And then as I grew, you know, I kind of got slack because I was moving around. Then I started taking, after I got old enough, I started taking, like, working seven days a week job. And then, you know, it, it hurted me a lot on Sunday. But as life went on, though, know, God fixed it. Well, I could go back to church. I began to grow in Christ. Amen. And I can remember it back here in... Uh, 1990, that I made a vow unto God. That's when I had got back, really got back in the church, began to know God. I made a vow to him that if he will retire me when I turn 40, I would do his will. Believe me, I started doing God's will. When I turned 40, he retired me. But I didn't specify how I wanted to be tired. Retire. What did you tell him? I said, Lord, just retire me from working when I turned 40 years old. That's when I got up that Monday morning. I went to work. And I was just walking across the wood. Guy was sewing. He cut a tree and throwed it across me. Took all this skin, all this off my arm. Broke this. I got plates now all the way down in my arm that, uh, 
after they hit me, I was going to drive home that same day. And I couldn't shift my truck because I had a standard shift truck. And uh, they brought me to the hospital to send me on to have surgeries. It wasn't long, about two days, I was back home. They put me in the cast, but God still was keeping me, holding a tight rein on me, if you want to say, a tight rein. Then uh, leading up to that, I started telling my wife I was having been preaching in my sleep. I mean, I was just preaching constantly in my sleep for 11 years. I set my calling in December 31st. And I set my calling that day. And I told the Lord, if you need somebody, send me. Amen. From that day, something hit me on top of my head when I went down the sole of my feet. It was like Jeremiah said, it was far up in my bone. Fire. And I danced all over that church. It was something like I... Couldn't hardly really just describe the heat feeling that went over me. And ever since then, I've been praying, preaching for the Lord. But now you, you were getting ready to do all this. God had anointed you to do something wonderful for him. But then you didn't have any idea what the enemy was going to try to do to you in the very near future, did you? No, sir. But just a very short, what, within a year? Yeah, but then a year. Just, just about a year after this. Tell us uh, about what happened when you were there, out there with those tractors and trees that day mm -hmm. when this tree fell on you. Tell us what okay. happened. Okay. We had had a storm down in our area, which is Manny. Now, but uh, trimming up a tree for firewood. So now, was I, this a great big tree? Ooh, Lord, it was a large tree. It was so large. When it did, I'm gonna, uh, that tree. I trimmed all the limbs up, all but one. So I just set the tractor on the limb. I said, well, I cut that limb so full, just let it drop down and it'll hold it. Because the limb was a big, big piece of wood. No, it was on the tree okay. holding it. And uh, I climbed back up on the tractor. Then I put it in gear and all of a sudden I feel the tractor kind of buck. By that time when it did that, the tree rolled and caught the cab and rolled it down in my leg and broke both femur bone in both legs. So it, nobody there I could call to go get help. I kept sitting there. All I could do is just pray and call on the name of Jesus. Pray and, you were and out call there all on by the yourself? name of Jesus. And my uncle were there with me, but with nobody there. We didn't have no vehicle. Oh. His grandson was gone in the vehicle to take a load of wood. So all I did was just sit there. Pray and call on Jesus. Just holler, Lord, please somebody help me. Or somebody please help me. That's all I can say. I tell them. Well, let, me, let me ask you this right now. Since that big old tree was laying on your leg, was there any pain at this time? Yes, I was in pain. You was in pain. But Because it crushed your leg. Yes. And the whole while all that weight was on my leg, my leg never did just flop. I had my foot on the brake and one on the gas pedal. And that was the position I was sitting in until they got the track. They bought a tractor and tried to move. They couldn't move it. So they radioed from the brain two big wine trucks. They brought the two big wine trucks, one next to the biggest one. It couldn't move, so they called, uh, I think, Mr. Cooks and tell them to send the biggest records they had. And then when they got there with the bigger record, they lashed the cable around it. Then they begin to winch, gradually pull. And I happened to look up, I could see those ties picking those winches up off the trucks off the ground. Wow. And uh, I had got in so much pain, I had got no, they had no more feeling. But thank be to God, I never passed out the whole while I was in all that pain. Because wow. God was taking care of. So it took, it took them, what, an hour, hour and a half? Or yeah, it took them about an hour and a half to, to get, get that tree off of you. And then once they did get you, get the tree up, get the tractor cut or whatever they had to do, did they have to tear up the tractor too? To yes, they had to cut the back and the sides off the tractor and the seat to slide me out the wow. back of it. And by that time, they had called for a helicopter. They had landed, so they took me out, put those. I call those bowls where you put around yeah. your oh, leg yeah, to yeah. hold them yeah. in place. And they first they sent me in the uh, ambulance. 
Then about that time, uh, the helicopter landed, so they uh, put me in the helicopter. They airlifted me on the LSU and Swiftport Trauma Center. And then what they did, my surgery, and I stayed in there for a month in ICU up there in surgery. Then they put me in a room. Then after that, I came back to my room. I swole so big, I was fit to burst. Wow, your legs were swelling up? Yeah, they had swole so big, they were getting ready to burst. And the doctor came in and lifted my cover up and seen how big I had swole. And he called him and said, y'all get him back in the surgery. Call his wife. And by the time my wife got there, they had brought me back out of surgery. They had to go in and cut me again through each side of my leg for all that infection to drain out. So they laid me in the hospital for another good about two or three weeks. So they put, they actually put quite a, some steel pins and stuff yes, in your legs and everything. They got they, but your knees and everything were so tore up. They couldn't fix it where you could ever walk again. Yes, sir. that's true. Now I got two screws in each one of those knees, rod right from there, all the way up to each hip. And I got screws to go in there. In there and hold them. Now you've had, you, and you, that's caused you a lot of pain, hadn't it? Yes, it caused me a lot of pain. Yeah, so you had a lot of pain and everything. And after you had this surgery, once the surgery was done and you went back home, and could you walk any at all after no, that No, I couldn't walk at all. Not, was, not at all? Not at I all. was stiff. I, I had to learn, well, really learn how well, to what, walk. What kind of problem did you have with your feet, too? Something happened to your feet. You yep. said that uh, they had to go back in and do some surgery, but had to cut the tendons in the back of your feet, your ankles or something, because your foot fell down or something? Yes, I had what you call the foot drop. Every time I pick your foot up, you just do that. So I, um, they t called me back into the hospital. They did surgery. At, uh, they did this at uh, Willis Knight. I, I switched doctors and went to Willis Knight because I knew the doctor that did the surgery. And they went back there. They cut me on top of my foot and in the back because right now I'm split it from here all the way down to my toe. They had to lay all that open, then split me up here and split me back here to take the leaders from the back and tie them to the front and take the one to the front and tie them to the back. Wow. In order for me to be able to even just stand and have some kind of control of my feet. Then, you know, leading up to that, when I, uh, my healing. But you still couldn't walk. No, I still couldn't walk. Still couldn't walk. And, uh, and you had to wear some steel braces or two or something. Yeah, I had you? those steel braces on. I wore those for, I guess, about eight or nine months, even though I was in a wheelchair. Yeah. Cause I, couldn't, I couldn't walk or everything. I had to do my wife them had to pick me up, sit me up, because I had what you call a stiff leg because it couldn't bend. And uh, everywhere we went, they had to lift me up. A lot of time I you know, stayed to the house. So... All this time now, almost two years have come and gone, or had when this happened. Yes, sir. From the time this happened, and you spent all this time in the hospital, and had to do all these surgeries, mm -hmm. you know, with several, and uh, and put the steel pins in your legs and your knees and the bolts and, and do the surgery on your feet and everything. And even after they sent you home, you still had to wear steel braces and you had to be in a wheelchair and you couldn't walk. That's right. And so then, then you made a... Real, real bad mistake. That's right. <laughs> you made a mistake. You went to church. church. You went to see an old country boy from Texas that believed that Man. Jesus still done miracles. That's right. And so when you went over there to this little church in Manny, Louisiana, and I remember the night I preached, I, they brought you in there. And they brought you in in a wheelchair. Yeah, they brought me in. And in then wheelchair. they set you out of the wheelchair or something, set yeah, you in a chair, a chair up on the front row. And I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know you. Of course, I, I was new there. And they set you there, and you got the steel braces on and everything else. And, and one of the things I remember is 
after I got through speaking that night, night. I was trying my best to build y'all's faith. Yes. <laughs> I was talking about faith and what God mm -hmm. promised to do and all these kind of things. And after I went over and laid my hands on Norma and prayed for her, you know, and, and God instantly healed that Parkinson and I saw her stop shaking. I, I will have to say that that night I really thought for a minute and I, st I guess it really did happen. When I touched her in the name of Jesus and her Parkinson instantly stopped, I immediately thought, my goodness, God has put the gift of miracles upon me tonight. You know, because that's one of the nine gifts. Yes, right. The gift, there's a gift of healing, mm -hmm. but there's also a gift of miracles. Mm -hmm. And when I saw that happen to me that night, when I touched her, I thought, wow, I'm going to run over here and pray for this other man on the front. And so I come over there and I kind of knelt down in front of you because I didn't know who you was. And I said, sir, I said, what happened to your legs? And you told me that 21 months ago, you said a big tree fell across a tractor I was driving and it crushed my legs. That's right. And you said, I haven't walked a step in 21 months. The doctors say my legs are so tore up that I won't never walk again, according to them. That's right. So, I, of course, at that time, I didn't know you'd had the surgery on your feet. I didn't know you'd had the dropsy. I didn't know they'd went in and cut you from, you know, from halfway down your leg all the way to the toes oh. to re verse all these tendons or whatever they are. I didn't know all that. All I knew you were sitting there with steel strapped all around you and you couldn't walk. And they brought you in in a wheelchair. Sure, that's right. And so I remember when I'm sitting there in front of you, I looked up you and I said, sir, I said, Jesus made you and me a great Green promise. Cross. Jesus said in John 14, 13 and 14, that anything I ask the Father in the name of Jesus, he will do. Now, that's John 14, mm -hmm. 13, 14. Mm -hmm. Two powerful scriptures. And I said, I believe that. Do you believe that? And I remember what you said. You said, I'm a Baptist. <laughs> and right. if it's written in that, that book, Bible, I, I believe, believe it. it. <laughs> I said, praise God. That's the kind of faith our king's mm -hmm. looking for. He's looking for a Baptist or anybody else that'll believe his word. word so I knelt there in front of you that night. And as I knelt there in front of you and put my hands on those knees, and I quoted those two promises to the king. And I said, now, Father, I ask you in Jesus' name to give Johnny two, or I didn't say, give this man, because I didn't man. even know your right. name. I said, I ask you to give this man two new knees. I ask you to heal these things and make them like brand new. Now, I didn't pray a long time, did I? No, sir. It didn't. was just a very simple little telling the Father what I wanted him to do for you in the name of Jesus. That's right. And then I said, now, do you believe that? Yes, sir. And you said, yes, sir, I do. I said, okay, then take that steel off and throw it away and stand up and let's walk. And you begin to unstrap that stuff. Yes, I been unstrapped it. You had faith. That's right, faith. You unstrapped all that stuff and you throwed it off to the side. And, and then I says, okay, stand up. And you bent your knees. When you pulled your mm -hmm. legs back under and you bent your knees, I reached out to take your hand. Yes, sir. And I said, get up. Mm -hmm. And you reached up and took my hand and I just jerked you up out of that chair. And when I did, you come up, and when you come up, of course, you bent your knees and everything, and you said, oh, well, sir, it hurts. It hurts. Wasn't that what you said? Yes, what I said. Yeah. I said, the devil's going to make it hurt. But I said, don't believe him. I said, take a step. And you remember how I give you a jerk? Mm -hmm. And I you remember. took that step, and then I said, come on. Don't let that unbelief get you. I said, take another one, and I jerked you again. And after I jerked you three times, I said, you're on your own. You can walk. And what did you do? Yeah, I took off walking, made a couple of steps. And they think I know I'm running all the way around that church, <laughs> just praising God and giving thanks unto him. Just study running. I'm telling and, you. Uh, and that same night I went home, I got up that morning and I prayed. You know, I told I, 
my toes, all my toes and things, everything was you no know, froze. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, before toes. now your toes were yeah, froze so they wouldn't drop just, down. Yeah, and like you couldn't your head, bend them, right? Couldn't bend your head. Oh, the next toes. morning. I got up, I prayed, I went, uh, got my wheelchair, but I went on you know, to the front room, sat in my front, told my wife, I just did like this. It just pointed. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. And it pointed at my toes. And my toes just began to bend. bend. God is awesome. He is more than awesome, isn't he, John? Right. In other words, he took those tendons that they had reversed. Not only did, not only, I'm going to scoot over here close to you. Not only did he give you two new knees and make them brand new, but then he took, because you was worshiping him and praising him, he took those knees, those feet, and he reversed those tendons so that your feet, your toes would work like they're supposed to again. That's right. Now then, you could walk, you can run. run. I mean, that night, that night when you got up out of that chair and I jerked you up and you took those three steps and I remembered you walked in, you first walked around the podium about yep. three times. Yeah. And as you went, you got faster. Yeah, faster and faster. And after the third time around, I remember you broke down that aisle and you had your hands up and you were screaming. That's right. That's, you don't see that much in a normal Baptist church, church, do you? No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. But praise God, when Jesus shows up, Baptist, Methodist, Catholic, it don't make no difference. We can praise yeah, the King. That's right. We can praise God. Yeah. He's the same You went God. running down that aisle, and you were screaming, and you are praising God. And I was just absolutely in shock. Yes. Me too. It shocked me <laughs> that, uh, you know, that God, you know, even in my life, God is still blessing me. Yeah. I'm still able now. Like I said, I can run. I can foam. I can do anything. And boy, those kids, even me at the church, and now they got with now they met up and said, Papa, you can run. You can stomp your feet. Your yeah. legs ain't hurt. <laughs> you, you've got to be a tremendous yes. blessing to that Baptist church over yes, there. Yes, sir. I mean, the people in that Baptist church know that Jesus is still a miracle working God. That's right. Because they know you personally. They what, one of the things, one of the things I got to say here, the man that you work for, that you know, yes, you, you know who I'm talking about. We won't call his name. No, sir. But the man that you work for, he was a traditional person. They don't believe in miracles, do they? No, sir. Now his wife was at the service that night, night when you got healed. Yes, sir. He didn't come to church that night, but no, she sir. did. Yes, sir. And she went home after your miracle, and she went home and told her husband, said, Honey, I saw God do a miracle tonight. And he said, Oh, yeah, what did you see him do? She said, I saw a man that was in a wheelchair with two broke legs get up and get instantly healed. Yeah, sure you did. I wonder how much they paid that guy to do this. <laughs> she said, no, we know Who this man. man. That's right. <laughs> he said, what do you mean we know this man? She said, his name is Johnny Brumfield. Yeah. Not the Johnny Brumfield that works for me. Mm -hmm. The one that got his legs and knees crushed two years ago in that tractor accident. That's the same one. He says, is that preacher going to be here again tomorrow? She said, yes, he's going to be there tomorrow night. He said, you know, I'm going to go give him 30 minutes. And he was there yeah, the next that's night. That's right. He told me. Yeah, he came. he came and listened to me teach for about 30 minutes before he had to go to work. Yeah. But did you know when God shows up like that, for somebody you know. Yeah, that's right. See, he knew you. Yes, he knew me. Because he'd known you for years. For years. I think right after. 13 years. Yeah, you had worked for him, hadn't you? Yes, sir. All, a lot of years of your life. And he knew you hadn't walked in nearly two years. Mm -hmm. He knew you had been in that hospital and been through all oh, them surgeries. Service. He knew your foot had been, had the problem it had. And he knew that you couldn't walk. That's right. And he knew the doctor said, you ain't never going to walk. Mm -hmm. And now then you're running and playing right. like nothing ever That's happened. That's right. Now, then one of the other things I noticed that here a while back, we started out here to GLC to give this testimony. Yes, and sir. we had some extremely bad weather, and we didn't make it. That's right. So we stopped down at Hillsborough, 
in the airplanes, and we sat a couple hours waiting for this bad weather, which never did pass. And while I was down there, I found out that you still had tremendous pain in your legs where they'd put those pins in there. Yes, sir, and you prayed. And so I prayed for you. That's right. And from that day to this. I've been doing good. I'm having no pain. And you prayed that those pins and rods be removed. Yeah, I, I, that's right. I asked the Lord to turn those rods into flesh and bone. Mm. Now, then somebody say, God couldn't do that. Hey, the God you and me serve, kid. Can that's you right. <laughs> he can do it. Like, I, I haven't been to the doctors, no. It's been a, we, we, I mean, there ain't no the pain. Hand. There ain't no, no reason to go. go. I mean, we prayed, mm -hmm. and God took away all that pain. Mm -hmm. I mean, two crushed knees that would never going to work again. The two legs, feet that are ain't never going to mm -hmm. walk again. Now then your feet don't drop, you run, you play, you can stand, stand up Johnny, stand up on this set right now. I want them to see you standing up. Flip, flip that thing over on whatever you need to do. I want you to see this man standing up right here before me. This is Johnny Brumford. Johnny, move those legs up and down. Let them people see that God did a great work on you. That's right. Is I he move, awesome? I can run. You can do anything. Anything. Praise the Lord. Sit back down there in that Praise chair. I just couldn't <laughs> let this get by mm -hmm. without them seeing you really stand and everything mm -hmm. because the king we serve, mm -hmm. which done a great and mighty mm -hmm. work for you, he don't love them. He don't love you anymore than he does anybody Nobody else, is. does he, John? No, sir. All we got to do is exercise mm -hmm. faith, faith and walk in obedience mm -hmm. to his word and the God we serve will do the same thing for you that he done for Johnny Brumfield. Yes, Praise the king. Glory.